Hey there, lovely. It's so good to see you, all of my lovelies, on Instagram. You're looking gorgeous today. Happy Tuesday to you, and thank you so much for joining me here. And hey there to you on Facebook. Hi, my gorgeous professional design divas and design loving design divas. It's good to be here with everyone. I'm Donna. I'm getting hearts already from people on Insta. Thank you so much. I'm Donna Hoffman. They call me the interior design advocate because I advocate on behalf of design lovers everywhere across the United States and beyond. If you are running your own business, we have coaching and support for you if you're running your own interior design business. If you are working on your own home as a design lover and you don't want to hire a designer, we've got support for you as well with my great online courses. And when I'm not doing all that, I get to run a luxury interior design company here in the Philadelphia region of the United States. Although we can work anywhere and we do work anywhere, beaches and we've got a project out in California and some projects are going to be somewhere in the United States. We're not sure where yet and up in New York and da, 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 da. So, um, you know, we've been, we've been including our design diva professionals more and more in our conversations and in our offerings here. And we're going to be launching something amazing for our professional design divas. Every week, 4 p.m. Eastern, we stop what we're doing at our luxury design company, and we come out and we talk to you, and we have a great time talking about things that are on your mind in design. And a lot of you asked me about me. I don't like talking about my me as much as I like talking about you, but you asked me about my design business, how I got started. I know a lot of you are in your own design businesses, or you're thinking about starting your own design business, or you're in your design business and it's just not going the way you would like it to. You're not hitting the hitting the, the milestones that you'd like, the revenue that you'd like, or you're feeling overwhelmed, or you're feeling scared. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story, and I'll tell you what you can take from it in terms of what you need to do to be successful. Because I started my design company during the Great Recession of 08. Oh, yes, indeed, I did. It was hairy. And just to make life a little more interesting, my husband Steve's industry had completely shriveled up. It went overseas and they, company after company that he worked for just went out of business, went into bankruptcy protection or shut in com completely. So he was getting downsized. So I'm in design school. So, so here's the backstory. Um, I always loved design. I was always doing it kind of on the side for friends and family, but very mildly. And Steve was always telling me, you should be doing this for a living. From the time you were knee high to a grasshopper, you were pushing around accessories in your mom's home, you were always interested in furnishings and so forth, you should be doing this for your living. And I always had a reason to tell him why it wasn't a good time, because I knew I'd need to go back to school, because I didn't want to be a dilettante. And then Steve looked at an, ad an addition that I had designed on our own home, an addition in a kitchen reno, and he said, look, this is incredible. And I'm gonna say this for the last time, you should be doing this professionally. This is what you should be doing. And it was like, I had never heard him before and a light bulb went off and I said, oh my gosh, you're right, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. So I went like a shot at 95 miles an hour. That's my slow speed, I'm a, I'm a high speed girl. Uh, I went at 95 miles an hour and I went back to school to study design. Before I did that though, I called a mentor of mine in design, a designer I had hired. And I said, Denny, what do you think of this? I'd love to join your company. What do you think? And she said, I'll let you join my company, but you go back and get training first. She said, I don't get, care if you get a, a degree, post-baccalaureate two-year degree. I don't care if you get a post-baccalaureate four degree. I don't care if you get a certification, but you get training. Otherwise, you are a dilettante and you are good to no one. You're no good to me and you're no good to clients. So I went back. I looked at programs. I looked at two-year programs, I looked at four-year programs, I looked at certifications. I happened to have been running another business at the time in electronic retailing. So I knew what I wanted to do. I knew I wasn't really interested in learning to do CAD draw design, computer-aided design. I knew I didn't want to spend three or four semester, two semesters studying commercial design. I knew I wanted to get into residential as a primary focus. And I knew I needed to be successful fast because of what was happening in Steve's career. So I left, I shut down a business that I had in electronic retailing where I helped other people go on to shopping networks like QVC or HSN here in the United States or in England, and I teach them how to sell their product on TV. And I'd coach business owners in doing that. I shut all that down and I went back for a certification in design. And where I felt that my program was lacking, I also added coursework at Parsons. I knew I wanted training. I knew I didn't want to be a dilettante. 
I will tell you that not one client has ever asked me what my training and background is or was. I did have uh, already a master's of fine arts, which is a three year degree. So I felt fairly well lettered, but I knew I wanted knowledge. So I went back to school and I walk in with my eye for design, right? Everybody always, when they, when they apply to my, right now my company is hiring. If you know a great designer in the Philadelphia region, send them to me. So anytime I get a resume that's kind of weak, but people say, I have an eye for design. I go, yeah, mm -hmm, check please. Everybody thinks they have an eye for design. I walked into design school that first day and my teacher, the first professor we worked with, started talking about what would be expected of us in the profession and I could feel my throat closing up and I thought, oh my God, what I don't know would fill an ocean with my eye for design and what I do know would fill a thimble and a half. And so I got up, I went to the restroom during a break. Steve at this point was in the middle of a layoff. It had been a fairly lengthy layoff, my husband. And I just started to sob in stall number three. I was sitting in that would be in my stall. And I thought, how the hell am I gonna do this? I've gotta be great at it, this. I've gotta be successful at it. And I don't wanna screw up for clients. I want this to be amazing for them. So I just thought, Donna, you've been successful at anything you've ever put your mind to. Just buckle it up, girlfriend, and just do the work. And that's what I did. And I studied and I learned. And where I felt that my program was lacking, I added more coursework at Parsons and I studied and I learned. And so I launched my company I launched my company in 08 when, every, when the world was going to hell in a recession. And I just kept my head down and did what I needed to do. I marketed and I kept trying to be excellent. And I marketed and I kept working for excellence. Because I had run another company, I knew how important processes and systems were. I also knew I didn't want to take three years or five years to try to figure it out. So I paid for coaching, I did. I paid a terrific coach who specialized in the design industry, and I credit some of my success to her. I credit some of my success to what I already knew as a businesswoman, and I credit some of my success to the amazing spouse I had, who was always behind me saying, go, 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 you can do this. When my knees were knocking, you can do this. So I wanna tell you what the common problems are for designers when you're launching or when your business isn't going the way you'd like it to or when you start doing compare and despair on Instagram. Imposter syndrome is a really big one. Who am I? Who the heck am I to be doing this? It's feeling like, like you're gonna screw it up or worried that somebody will uncover that you're not you know, what the, the, the great design professional that you, you wanna be, that you feel you are, that you want your clients to look to you as. So imposter syndrome is a really big thing for designers to get over. Also confidence issues. And you gotta face it guys, you have to be really confident as a designer because your clients are coming to you, they don't know what they're doing, they're confused. That's why they're hiring you. So if they smell a lack of confidence in you, forget it, it's all over and the tail will start to wag the dog, right? The children will start to run the roost, run the home. Can't have that. You need to have confidence, you need to project confidence. Even if you don't feel it, you gotta walk the walk and then and talk the talk, right? And then it starts to become part of you. Um, another issue for a lot of designers is being afraid of clients. Yeah, being afraid to speak up to clients, being afraid to say to a client, you know, this isn't an ideal way that you wanna work this, or this is a counterintuitive way from a process perspective, or this is a counterintuitive design move, here's why. So you need to be rich in your skill set so that you can say that to clients. You need to be careful too when you're starting out that you're taking projects that you know you can deliver on when you're just starting out, you probably don't want to sign on to build a home from scratch with a client at you know 20,000 square foot residence. You probably want to start with one room with somebody or possibly when you're just, just starting to gain your confidence and your sea legs, you may want to just help somebody with some piecemeal design, getting you know a new sofa in their space and a couple of new pieces. I now don't enjoy those jobs at all because for me, I enjoy full room, full residence. But when I was first starting out, I would take any job I could get. Even if I didn't like the client's design aesthetic, I'd take the job. Even if I knew once I helped a client pick out the right new window treatment and right new sofa, I still wasn't gonna get her where she wanted to go because everything else she had picked out in that room was counterintuitive to where she wanted to go. Or as an analogy, she's showing me images of strawberry shortcake, but she's giving me chocolate and peanuts to work with. You can't make strawberry shortcake out of chocolate and peanuts, right? 
So, but at the beginning, you just take, you take work. You work for anybody who will hire you. And then as you become more confident and polished in what you have to offer, that's when you can start to turn away projects or you use certain language so you're not even attracting certain projects. So what I want you to know is the takeaway from this, you know, I have a mentor in life, she's a wonderful woman that I've, I've known for about 30 years, and she always says, you know, hearing somebody else's story, it doesn't really matter because everybody has such a different path and such different learnings, and that is true. But if you can find the lesson takeaways from those stories, it can help you in your journey as well. So here's what I want you to know. Being afraid of clients, being having confidence issues, feeling like you have imposter syndrome, these are common things for designers to struggle with in their businesses. Being afraid of talking about money to clients, what their budget is, breaking bad budget news to them, saying to a client who wants to sign you, I'd love to sign you, but I don't think your budget is going to cover what you want it to do, so I can't help you. Having frank budget talks can be really scary for designers as well. The way to combat all of this is twofold. One, systems and processes. You just lean into your systems and processes that you have in your company because that is your guiding light. And if you don't have excellent systems and processes, I don't just mean like, how do I file an invoice? No, I mean, how do I design a project? That should be systematized. And every step within it should be systematized. So leaning into your processes will always give you more confidence as a designer, always, always, always. And I believe you learn from people who've done it before. So you learn from a coach who's done it before to shorten your learning curve or eliminate your learning curve. And so you can lean into someone's shoulder when you're thinking, how many, how many, how many, how do I make this happen? In January of 2022, we are launching a Design Business Academy, a six month program for design business owners. I'm making the informal announcement now, I'm not giving you the name of it yet. But it's going to be a six-month program. We're releasing new information every month, and it's specifically designed for designers who are sensitives and empaths and creatives who feel like, ah, can I really be a seven-figure business? Yeah, I'm living proof. You can be as a creative, as a sensitive, as a designer who started her business during the recession of 08. I'm a seven-figure business now, and I love running my design company. So I want, my, I want my learnings to give back to the community, and that's why we'll be launching this program. And I'll tell you more about it in the years, in the year, in the months ahead. So if you have questions about your design business, I'm sorry we couldn't go live on Facebook, technical problem, but here I am with you on Instagram. If you have questions about your design business or you're thinking of signing, starting a design business, send in those questions. I am so happy to ha answer those for you. We have a bunch of questions. I got a lot of questions because some of you sent in questions ahead of time. So here we go. <laughs> okay. So Carol is saying, congratulations, Donna. You're such an inspiration. I'm so glad, Carol. That's what I want. That's why I'm out here doing this with you. All right. Some questions that came in. Faith Sheik said, I love all things home decor. I'd love to start a business. Do you need a degree or to be tech savvy? You need to be tech savvy enough to know that you can learn the tech side. You do need to issue things technically. You need to issue uh, space plans and, but I believe, budgets. Um, so you do need to have that faith. You know, you can't get out there with a crayon and a, you know, and a marker and be taken seriously because of the competitors around you. Um, do you need a degree? Um, I have a certification. I have a master's degree in fine arts, but I don't have a degree in design. I have a certification in design with additional coursework at Parsons, and it has served me well. And those are awards that you see back there that our company has won uh, under my, my design leadership um, as, the, as the lead designer. So there's that. So Christina Monti said, did you go to a four-year college to major in interior design in particularly? I think I just answered that. If I was starting over, I would certainly have gone back for a design degree if I was, you know, in my in my teens and 20s. Um, but I have to tell you, and I'm not knocking formal design education, you need to be educated. I have hired and fired designers who have impressive degrees, impressive lettering behind their name. They couldn't design their way out of a paper bag. They weren't, they didn't have it, they didn't have it. And they weren't good with time. They weren't good with dollars. They weren't good with project management. So I do think you must get training if you're going to be controlling other people's money and their dollars. Um, 
for a lot of us who, who went back and have got certifications, you end up learning in the field and you end up doing what's called field training. Um, but I definitely would not just start a business because you decorated your own home and now you think you can design for other people. You gotta go back and get training. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's a two year degree, a four year degree or a certification, you need training, period. Because the places to trip are huge in number in this industry. It's a competitive industry. Um, it's a saturated industry. You're competing with your own clients and your own customers if you're practicing in a certain realm in the industry. I can talk to you about that later. Um, so you need training. You need your sea legs under you. Uh, Christine also says, did you do any, an internship? No, I didn't. I started my business out of school. So this, that was scary for me because it's not like I got to be a fly on the wall in someone else's company. You know, here in my company, I always say to the designers that work here, I will mentor you as high as you want to go. You want to become an excellent designer in my company? Let's make you that. You want to become a, a design director in my company? Fabulous. Let's go there. You want to become, you want to buy my company from me and run it one day? Sure. Let's, let's get you there. I want to build women to be as excellent as they want in my company. I recognize that the people I'm training might go out there and start their own business. Well, if that's what's in order, then that's what's in order. So the nice thing about working for another company first is you learn how it's done. But if you don't want to go that route, I didn't. I started my company when I was in my 40s. I didn't want to start interning for someone else. That's why I went right into coaching. I had somebody guiding me through process, sticky client situations, client situations where you wanted to throw up on your own shoes because you're getting so upset or nervous about something jumping the tracks, jumping the rails, right? So that's one of the reasons we're launching this program that I'm launching in, in January for people who are in their businesses less than eight years. It's a tremendous growth trajectory in those first eight years. And if I can shorten that for you, no matter where you are in that trajectory, then I want you with me in that program when we launch in January because it's a very whole person type of program. It's not just about the business of design, and it is or the marketing of design, and that's in there too, but it's also about the business of you and your mindset and your soul set so that you stay really elevated um, and confident and clear and focused as a design business owner and as a creative and as a designer. More questions, Sandra's saying, I landed my first job doing a studio apartment. Yes, that's beautiful, Sandra, I'm excited for you. I hope you'll join me in the program we're launching in January. That's great news and congratulations to you, yummy, yummy. Carol is saying, it's wonderful to have a supportive spouse. Go, Steve. We love you, too. <laughs> That's very cute. Steve and I just celebrated our 29th wedding anniversary. The man, he's not a mushball, but I tell you what, when he writes me cards, he still makes me cry. His cards are so good. I feel so lucky. Um, Carol says, what did you do uh, before design? Well, when I was um, in my teens and early 20s, I was an actor. Um, getting close to like off off Broadway kind of stuff in New York, not musical stuff, more like either the woman on stage who did the dramatic role and cried or the farce, like very comedy, you know, crazy, you know, make you laugh kind of stuff. And then I left that. I, um, I had a lump in my breast and I needed to have it surgery and I didn't have any except I really didn't have any insurance at the time to deal with, to speak of as an actor. So I had to borrow money from my parents and my brother, Jeff to pay the, the, uh, the anesthesiologist and the surgeon. I wasn't even worried about whether or not this thing was cancerous, idiot. I was worried about how I was gonna pay for it. So I borrowed this money from my family. Thank God it turned out to be a lumpy tumor, not a cancerous tumor. But I, I wanted to repay this money to my family. And so I took a job at a little network called QVC and I made money. And I didn't know I could make money. And I made money and I was able to pay off this debt didn't like the work at QVC at all. I got really bored doing it. I was grateful for it, and I met some amazing people and talented people, but I didn't find it interesting work. But I stayed for about four and a half years till we started our family. Once I left that, then I helped when I, then I had ba a baby, and then I helped other people sell their product on TV, and then you heard maybe the rest of that story from that business where I was helping other people in electronic retailing. Then I got into my own design business just as a big recession was hitting. Ugh. A luxury business just as a recession is hitting. What was I thinking? But it turned out well. Uh, Jennifer, hi Donna. Any info about how much, uh, how how much your new program will cost? Yes, we're going to make it affordable for everybody. 
So we're going to break it out into payments so that you'll have a series of payments to make each month. Um, and we'll offer a deeper discount if you do it all as a single payment. I don't think I have all of the numbers finalized on it, but I want to, it, it's going to be something that will be very manageable and you'll be able to make up in one job. So we're definitely trying to make it very, very easy for you. I apologize, Jennifer. I don't have all those numbers in my brain, um, but I know we've looked at it, um, and it'll, it'll, it's tremendous value for the, for the, the investment. You will not only have information released every month with me, but you will have a group Zoom get together with me so we can talk on camera uh, about whatever it is we've talked about that month or that's on your mind. You will have um, every month there are assignments to move you. You're not going to take in information and then build. You're going to be building as you're taking in the information. And there'll also be a monthly um, private Facebook uh, group as well, private, private live in a Facebook group. So you'll have those two contacts with me as well. So a lot of good stuff and a lot of resources and good stuff coming. Hopefully that helps you, Jennifer. Get on my mailing list. If you're not, get on my mailing list so that you'll be one of the first people to learn about this uh, when we make the announcement. And I'm only going to offer it once next year. That's it. It'll go up, go live in January, go for six months, and then that's it. Okay, Sandra, what were the first steps to start? What are the first steps to starting a design business? Sandra, I'd love for you to get my checklist, which unfortunately we couldn't go live on Instagram, but Katie LinkedIn maybe can put it in bio. link in bio. Um, that checklist, the successful design biz checklist, is going to tell you a lot about what you should be doing when you're starting your business, or if you've already started, kind of take a uh, what's the word? Take a a uh, take the temperature of your business and see where you have to fill in, where you're missing some blanks. I bet you're underinsured. So take a look at that. Lizzie Lizard is, or L Lizzie Lizard is saying, Donna, thanks for the inspo. Any recommendations for a specific certification? I don't know what part of the country you're in, Lizzie Liz, so I don't know. I can't tell you that. Um, I think here in my area, I think Moore College does a nice, very nice job. Um, Carol's saying, what an awesome story. Carol, I cried a lot during that story <laughs> when I actually lived it, so I'm glad you enjoyed it. That's good. Um, Sherry wants to know any certification, um, any certification recommend? Is it a national program? No, you would look for design certifications in your area. They can be one-year programs or two-year programs. You can do them in the evenings, weekends, so forth. You can do them full-time as well. Depends on what is in, in your area. Um, okay. Sherry said, do you have to be an existing designer to take my course? You mean that the, the design program, the design business program, the academy that we're doing? No, I don't think so. I think, here's who I think this academy is great for. This is just, because I'm going to be serving confidence and clarity for dinner, and I want you at the table. All right, so here's who it's great for. If you are in your design business eight years or less, that means you're thinking of starting, you just started, or you started within the last eight years the last five years, within the last three years, and you are not making the revenue you want. You're working your ass off and you're tired and you're overwhelmed and you're thinking, where is the money? I read a depressing survey, and I've read it year after year, about how poorly paid design business owners are. You work your tail off and, the, and, and they're not making the revenue. And there was a small group of women and men who were business owners who were making the kind of revenue I said, that's where I'm aiming. And I said to Steve, if I don't get there, I'm going to shut this business down. Because, yeah, I love what I'm doing, but I don't have to have a nervous breakdown to be happy doing something in my work. I'll do something else where I'm not working this hard and not making the money I want to make. So I learned how to thread the needle. And I learned how to do it during a recession. So I want to show you what I know that you need to know, whether you're just launching or launched within the last eight years and you're in your growth phase, your growth trajectory. So Sherry, hopefully that helps you in answering who we're going to be helping. And the other thing is too, listen, if you love design, you're a sensitive. You're a creative and you're a sensitive. You are either sensitive as in an HSP, highly sensitive person, or you're sensitive as in an empath. I'm on the extreme end of empath, unfortunately, which is what I am, or fortunately. It's so easy for creatives to say, oh, I'm not a money person. I'm not, a, I'm not an accountant type. I, I probably won't be that successful in this. Bull blank. You can be miraculously successful in this if you learn how to lean into your creativity, 
how to lean into your sensitivity to create the wind beneath your wings, to be the, the, the fuel that propels you. That is who this program is for. Designers who have their own business, eight years or less in that business, designers who know that they are creatives and sensitives or creatives and empaths or just creatives who wonder, can you really be a financial rock star in your business? Answer, yes, you can. You don't have to be the former accountant, the former, you know, numbers person. I am telling you, this is a program for you. So there it is. Sandra saying, Donna, your crying was watering seeds. <laughs> Look how you've grown. Hey, Sandra, the next time I'm crying and uh, talking to Steve Hoffman about something, I'm going to just tell him I'm watering seeds. Steve, if you're watching this, happy anniversary to you. I'm just watering seeds. So <laughs> Sandra said so. so. I like that. It's good. So listen, guys, if you have any other questions about your design business or whatever about your, your design business, please feel free to put that in. While you're doing that, I'll let you know what we're talking about next week. I got all embarrassed telling that story, so I made myself. I think I have a hot flash happening. <laughs> um, all right. So next week, we're talking about handling the dreaded B word, client's budget stress, and designer fear. Uh-huh. Handling the B word, client's budget stress and designer fear. Definitely want to be here with me next Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern. If you missed any portion of this, you can see it not on YouTube because unfortunately we screwed that up. Can't rerun this, but you can find it in the nine square of my of my Instagram feed. So there it is. You can watch the whole thing that way. If you're not following us on our luxury design brand at IDH Designs, there's give us a, give us a follow. And seriously, if you're in the Philadelphia region or the Princeton, New Jersey region or the mainline Philadelphia area, PA area and you are a designer and you're looking to join a great design team, send me your resume. We are hiring. So there it is. All right, lovelies. It was great being here with you. I think that last call on questions. We're good on questions. You guys look great. It was great here being here with you and I'll see you next week. Bye now. Hi, this is Donna. Thanks so much for watching, and if you like this video, please hit the like button and comment below so I know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe to the Interior Design Advocates channel so you don't miss any of our great content.